I was pouring my bowl of fortune totems for St. Patrick's Day when I realized that all of my cereal had been mysteriously replaced with some surprise sculpting supplies. So the only natural way to process this tragic loss of cereal is in the Wathan Creations way, sculpting an existential leprechaun. I've already made an armature in a pose that says, why do I exist? So we can start straight away with the sculpture's head. While I always dive headfirst into projects, I've never actually done a head first, so this will be a fun experiment in hoping his noggin is the right shape and size. We're making an older leprechaun who will be contemplating how he spent his life, sitting on a pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. We'll blend everything in together and refine the shapes, then pop in two pre-baked eyeballs into the empty sockets. He'll have a big bushy beard that will cover all of this up, but at this point I don't really know what's going on, so I'll give him some nice pouty lips. Then we can refine all of this detail, adding some skin folds and wrinkles, reshaping the bulbous nose, and then moving into the finer details. First adding some somber, heavy eyelids, then some smile lines around the eyes and mouth. And then finally, we'll add a skin pore texture around the face with an old toothbrush and a couple sculpting tools. We'll now give Uncle Leprechaun a first bake to lock in all the detail, and then come back in with the hair. We'll start with a beard, which starts off as some tiny cheek blankets of clay that we'll lovingly impart some curls into, starting with lots of tiny little wiggly cuts with my X-Acto knife, then some random sideways jiggles to open up some of the cuts and deepen the texture. The little sideways jiggles help to make the hair look more curly, voluminous, and slightly unkempt. After that's finished, we'll add two big bushy caterpillar eyebrows and then give the sculpture another quick bake before we start in on the hair. His hair will be pulled back in a tight bun, and this decision is partly because I didn't want to sculpt a flowing mane of curly hair, but also because insert excuse- wait. Oh sh- Then we can tie the bun tight with a braided rope. We'll paint this later to add some color contrast. Finally, I decided that the hair looked a little bit too nice and coiffed, so I'll add a few wild flourishes and escaped strands. With the head finished, we can attach it to our body armature and then bulk it out with some aluminum foil before draping some clay over top so that we can get a general sweater-shaped shape that we can add some wrinkles and folds to. Now to make our sweater, we'll be making a whole bunch of twisted noodles using this fun little tool. I don't remember what it's called, but it's absolutely amazing. Clay goes inside and then comes out in perfectly uniform thin ropes of clay. We'll just twist these up and then lay them in a pattern to make our fisherman's sweater. Then once that's been knitted, we'll slice up a couple little strips of clay and lay those over top, and then blend and fold them to be his tweed jacket. Then once the jacket looks jackety, we'll stipple the surface with a toothbrush to give these nice dimply tweed textures, before adding a couple pockets and some buttons. Then we can correct his position wearing nine and a half fingers worth of gloves until we have the right posture. Once he's baked, we'll remove his seat belt and then actually set him aside to get started on the pot of gold. I did this because I wanted to make sure his legs would properly conform to the pot, so I had to build that first before making his lower half. And this whole section of the project was very much trust the process. Now, so the legend goes, leprechauns are small mischief makers, similar to fairies, with a penchant for shoe making and boot mending. Each keeps a small hoard of golden treasure in a cauldron at the end of the rainbow. And if a human is ever able to catch a leprechaun, then they have the possibility not only to steal the leprechaun's riches, but also gain fortune in the form of pure luck. This cauldron holds our leprechaun's treasure, not yet stolen by humans. And our leprechaun is seated, wondering, what's the point? Why hide this pot of gold from the humans in the first place? And then what purpose is in all the silly jokes and mischief? We'll grease the insides of the bowl with some liquid clay, and then add in some miniature gold coins so that it looks like the pot is filled up with gold. Then once that's finished and baked again, we'll add some wear and tear to the pot in the forms of scratches and gashes. The pot was a bit unstable, so we'll sculpt ourselves a little rock for it to rest on, using this sculpy granite clay that I purchased by mistake. It's got some nice rocky grain texture that works really nicely for this purpose. While it's still soft, I'll press the cauldron in to leave a perfect dent so that it can fit neatly into place later on. Finally, we're on to the bottom half of our leprechaun. To start, we'll smush clay into a vague pantish shape, and then add the wrinkles and seams along with some extra cloth texture from a scrap of canvas. Then we can set our leprechaun into place on the pot of gold to get the right shape, and then start adding in the detail, starting with the pant seams, and then a few sewn plaid patches where the pants had worn down and needed to be mended. And now we can admire how, 
From the back, he kind of looks like he's taking a really large poo. His shoes will be two leather slip-ons that we'll brush some texture into before adding some wear and tear. Folklore says that leprechauns ran around performing pranks and mischief so much that their shoes and pants would wear thin and have to be constantly mended, which is why I'm adding some stitched together cuts and tears. Then we can give him a simple belt to hide my shoddy transition in the waist before starting on the worst part, the hands. I struggle with hands, and it's a miracle that these turned out as well as they did, especially given that the deleted footage from my many attempts to sculpt these took up nearly an hour of footage. I've definitely come a long way since my first sculptures, but I still have a lot of improving to do. With the first hand complete, I'll fit it into shape holding a buckled top hat that I made off camera, and then make the left hand holding a little gold coin. Finally, I'll add some button jacket cuffs to the wrists, and then we're on to the painting. I'll start off with a black wash, which I'll spread over our rock to sink into every recess. Then I'll bring back the highlights with some white dry brushing, followed by some speckling with various colors of brown paint. Finally, we'll add a few streaks and puddles of this crackle paint, which I've never actually used before, but I'm hoping might turn out neat. While that dries, we'll start in on the pot of gold. The cauldron starts off with a thick black coat of paint on everything that won't be coins. This is supposed to look like worn cast iron, so I'll mark each scratch with dark silver and then give the entire cauldron a dry brushing to bring out the texture and add some easy peasy weathering. Once that's dry, we'll break out the gold and paint the pile of coins so that they look more like metal and less like the contents of a grayscale porta potty. To bring it all together, we'll grab our cauldron and our rock and admire how that crackle paint turned out. Certified neat. Then we'll whip up some moss, which is just a mix of Mod Podge and green flocking, and use it to add some life to our rock and cement our pot of gold in position. While the moss is still wet, we'll add a couple miniature four-leaf clovers that I made using a fake leaf that I found on the floor somewhere. And now we're on to the main event, our leprechaun. We'll start off with his pants, painting the main cloth a canvas brown and then making his shoes a darker leather brown. Then we can paint the patches a few different colors of fabric, implying that these have been repaired over many years of pranks and mischief on humankind. The same sort of wear and tear goes into the leather shoes as well. Next we're off onto the gray sweater with some gentle off-white paint for our wool. Once that's done, we'll do a light gray wash to sink into the recesses and tickle the tips with pure white to make the texture pop. We'll give his skin a pale tone and touch up his fingernails with a bone white, followed by an aging sepia wash. I'll paint his face as well, then enhance his wrinkles and creases with a tan wash. I'll give him some subtle dark circles under his eyes, and then paint his peepers and almost get them to look in the same direction. Progress. Then his lips get some natural pinks, and we can start cracking on his hair. For this, I'll paint each lock with a watered-down orange until it's all fiery, but I want this to be a bit more realistic than a cheap serial cartoon version of folklore, so I'll deepen the colors with a brown wash to make it look slightly more like a natural hair color, then add some streaks of lighter orange and white to make the leprechaun look older. The leprechaun that's also your college ethics professor. So as you know by the title and some of the brief discussions in this video, this is an older existential leprechaun contemplating how he's spent his life and what he's going to do going forward. And while the leprechaun feels the absurdity of life, does this absurdity crush us, making life devoid of all meaning? Or can we reframe the narrative and create our own meaning? That life is not something done to us, but something we can do. The game the leprechaun plays is an absurd one with no purpose, but the leprechaun plays the game anyway. We can now place the single coin in his left hand and his hat in his right. A four-leaf clover in his lapel. And a UV resin twinkle in his eye while he wonders about the meaning of it all. Let's take a look at how he turned out.
Happy St. Patrick's Day, everyone, unless you're not watching this on St. Patrick's Day, and in which case, Happy Moral Dilemma Day. I hope you enjoyed this silly little video. Let me know if you have any thoughts down in the comments. Hope to see you next time.